In Death Lends a Hand, Ray Milland gave one of Columbo's best supporting performances, combining powerful dignity and quiet vulnerability. His appearance in Season 2's The Greenhouse Jungle, now as a fully-fledged killer in his own right, is... well... I'm gonna call up your superiors. Then why are you here, Columbo? Oh, go ahead, it won't bite you. But don't just stand there, push! I presume that's Gallo's humor? Damn it, Columbo, what's this all about? Milan stars as Jarvis Goodland, a perpetually grumpy botanist and only living relative of his idiot nephew, Tony. Boo. Tony's got too many women and too much forehead. He gives both his wife and his would-be mistress a signed photo of himself. Man, I gotta start doing that. Said wife, Kathy, doesn't appreciate his taste in gifts and is retreating into the arms of Conan the Barbarian over here. Hey, very good, sir. Do you want this? So, along with Orchid-obsessed Uncle Jarvis, Tony hatches an utterly harebrained scheme to fake his own kidnapping so as to break his trust fund to the tune of $300,000 and then pay off Kathy's new boy toy to ditch her and stay away for good. Jarvis calls Kathy from a payphone pretending to be the kidnappers and disguises his voice by holding a handkerchief over the receiver. If only Kathy had recognized Milan's distinctive voice, this case could have been solved before the opening credits. What are you talking about? Tony's car is found in a canyon with a bullet hole in the window and Columbo's call to the scene, marking the first time he's appeared on screen before the actual murder has happened. The following scenes of Jarvis pretending to drop the money off to Tony's captors is reminiscent of Ransom for a Dead Man, albeit on a much smaller scale. Once the exchange has been completed, Jarvis reconvenes with Tony in a cabin in the woods where he finally puts all of us out of Tony's misery by shooting him dead so as to keep the loot all for himself. Oh, delightfully devilish, Jarvis. The end of a perfect day. The clues start piling up for Columbo right away. Why did the kidnappers instruct Jarvis to deliver the ransom instead of Kathy? Because they probably knew that if Catherine had that much money in the car, she'd just keep on driving. I wonder how they knew that. How did the bullet fired into Tony's car miss him? From that trajectory, he surely would have been killed right off. Jarvis doesn't help his case by being a bit too honest about what he really thought of his nephew. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you maybe the greatest insult in TV history. In that case, I don't mind revealing that my nephew isn't worth a sack of peat moss. He's a wife-ridden weakling whom I've despised for years. And if it wasn't for the fact that he's my only relative, I'd call up his captors and tell them that they're welcome to him. You know by now that I am a big fan of Milan's season 1 performance as Arthur Kennicott, which was gracious and subtle. His Jarvis Goodland is the polar opposite. He spends most of his time yelling at people and throwing out vicious put-downs. Oh, and Kathy, assuming nothing is wrong with Tony, it's been my pleasure to hear you so upset. It's a rather one-note performance, I'll admit, but I'll also be damned if it's not entertaining as all hell. And Milan is great at being annoyed by Columbo's ramblings. Not as rusty as I thought I was. Ah. Uh. Oh, and his hairpiece is pure evil. Kathy Goodland is an interesting character. She and Tony, by all accounts, lived separate lives despite being married, and it seems she mostly cared about his money as a means of funding her spendthrift lifestyle. She's a standoffish with Columbo as Jarvis is. The poor lieutenant can't catch a break. I was out with Ken. We took a nice long drive, and you can make whatever you like out of that. My worry for Tony did not require my staying around the house until his return, on pins or needles. But despite all this, Columbo himself never seems to pass judgment on the woman for the way she chooses to live her life. Don't worry, everything's gonna be alright. There's a great moment when he exposes that her big lunk of a lover was willing to take Tony's money to break up with her, then promptly fucks off himself, leaving the unhappy couple to have one hell of an awkward conversation. Falk himself deserves praise for his performance here. I've commented before how in season 1 he was still developing his take on the character, but by season 2 he had mastered it. He's on top form throughout the greenhouse jungle. Which leads me to the episode's single greatest moment. On his way to inspect Tony's abandoned car, Columbo takes a tumble down a steep hillside. Whether this was planned, ad-libbed by Falk, or a total accident caught on camera, no one's sure, but it never fails to delight and Columbo's response to the situation is perfect. But I'll tell you, it was the quickest way down. Oh yes, by far. 
All that being said, the real MVP of this episode is Bob Dishy as Sergeant Wilson, an overeager rookie fresh out of the academy who's assigned to work the case with Columbo. Mr. Goodland was uh, halted by the shot you were looking at there, forced out of the car, which was then pushed over the side. This to conceal the fact that he was grabbed by person or persons unknown. That jive with your thinking, sir? Uh, I was wondering, could you tell me your name? NBC had pressured creators Lincoln Levinson to give Columbo a sidekick. Wilson was created to temporarily appease the studio, but their long-term response was teaming Columbo up with Dog. Wilson is Columbo's first human partner, and possibly the best. Well, thank you very much. His preoccupation with newfangled policing techniques provide a perfect clash with Columbo's old-school sensibilities, and the way Lone Wolf Columbo is constantly trying to fob him off is hilarious. Uh, I, I think I'll go the long way around. Oh, yes. Fine. Tell you what. You go ahead. Lieutenant, we got a ring. Dishy himself is joyful in the role, with those big puppy dog eyes, gormless smile, and barely concealed desperation to impress his superiors make Wilson an endearing character. Well, that speaks very well for you, Sergeant Wilson. In fact, it's Wilson's interest in increasingly modern technology that helps Columbo finally crack the case. Jarvis learns that Kathy also owns a 32 caliber, the same type of gun he used to kill Tony, so he decides to frame her by sneaking into her bedroom while she sleeps, swapping her gun for his own. He then presents her gun, claiming it to be his, to Wilson for forensic examination, which will exonerate him of Columbo's suspicions. A subsequent search of Kathy's house turns up the murder weapon, and Wilson can't wait to make the big arrest. But Columbo stops him and summons everyone to Jarvis's greenhouse. Solarium. Oh, solarium, right, I stand corrected. Columbo recalls a story Jarvis told him earlier about firing his gun inside the green, sorry, solarium at an intruder, but missing and only hitting some dirt. Using a state-of-the-art tool known as a metal detector, Columbo has recovered that bullet and can ballistically match it to the gun found in Kathy's room. By now, proved to have definitely been the murder weapon. I don't know how you're going to explain, sir, how the same gun that fired this bullet in the dirt ended up tonight in Mrs. Goodwin's dressing room. I quite like this gotcha, as it ties into the episode's overall themes of old versus new, and Columbo having to learn how to use new technology in order to solve the mystery. If I forget this, my wife will kill me. The greenhouse jungle, or maybe that should be the solarium jungle, isn't the greatest of Columbo adventures. That is the most miserable specimen I've ever seen. The side characters are hard to feel sympathy for, the villain is a tad underwritten, even lacking a clear motive for murder other than sheer greed and pure hatred of this nitwit. Or I told you to listen to the police calls. I have been, I just turned it off and turned it on again. And past the halfway point, Falk and Milan share no scenes together until the denouement. It's flawed, yes, but I find it to be quite enjoyable. Milan's performance is entertaining, Falk is in full flight as his most iconic character, and Dishy is an inspired addition to the story. If you're willing to overlook some of the issues with this one, then I'd recommend The Greenhouse Jungle. Oh, and I want to give special commendation to the score, composed by jazz saxophonist Oliver Nelson in his only Columbo contribution. The music in these early episodes are, I think, the show's best, and The Greenhouse Jungle stands out to me as having my favourite score of the entire series. So let's end on a brief selection of the finest music the lieutenant has to offer. Keep him in sight. No tailgating. Understand? Yes, sir. 